Hey guys, welcome back for another video. As promised, I am working on setting up my two car garage workshop. So in this video, what I'm doing is building a enclosure for my Shea Poco 3 CNC machine so I can move it up from the basement where it currently is, where I originally built. I'm moving it to the garage so I can keep an eye on it while I'm working on other projects. And I also want to put it in an enclosure where it's going to keep it nice and quiet and a lot more dust free and put some dust collection in there. So I'm going to share that with you now. So stay tuned, check it out, and I will see you in a bit. Also, if you are new here I am going to be working on some videos where I'm setting up my two car garage shop so stay tuned for those videos and if that's something you're interested in definitely consider subscribing hit that subscribe button the bell icon so you'll be notified when we put out new videos so I went down and I picked up this half inch OSB which I'm going to use to build the enclosure and I chose OSB because well it's cheaper than using MDF or half inch plywood so first I'm going to start off by cutting the 2x4s for the lower frame that the enclosure itself will sit on top of and the underneath where the frame is that I'm gonna start building is a cabinet where I'm gonna be able to use for storage, for storing things for the CNC machine. So we're gonna get right into this. I am gonna start cutting up the two by fours needed for this lower frame and then we're gonna start putting things together. We'll see you in just a second. Alright, so now that I have the 2x4s cut for the frame for the bottom of the CNC enclosure, the base of it, I'm just going to go ahead and assemble the two sides. Basically, it's like two side legs and put those together and then we're going to have to go ahead and cut a piece of that OSB to put on the base of it. So I'm going to go ahead and assemble this and then we'll go ahead and cut that OSB. So now that we have the two bottom frame pieces put together, we're going to cut a piece of half inch OSB to go 48 inches by 45 inches, which will be the base. Then we're going to put wheels on this and flip it over. So I'm going to go ahead and cut the bottom piece and then we'll put the wheels on and get it flipped over. Alright, so I got this piece uh, cut 45 by 48 piece of OSB. I'm just going to go ahead and screw and glue it to the base legs and then we'll get it flipped over after we put the casters on. on this thing, I'm going to go ahead and flip it over. So now that I got the base this far along, before I do any more, I need to go ahead and take my CNC apart and get it off of what it's currently sitting on because the base of the top of the enclosure is the base that the CNC is already sitting on. So I'm actually going to be utilizing the base that I have the CNC sitting on already. That's going to go on top of this. I'm going to screw that onto here and then I'll be able to put the sheathing on and then we'll continue on with the rest of the build. All right, so this is the base that I had built for the CNC to sit on downstairs in the basement. I just took the top of the CNC off and the, separated the base from it. I brought this part up and attached it to the frame base at the bottom. Put the base of the CNC up here on top to see how much room I'd have on either side. And I have a couple inches all the way around. So it's gonna give me plenty of room to work once I get this all put together. So the next step I'm gonna go and cut the OSB sheathing for the three sides and then we'll be able to put the doors together. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut that sheathing and then we'll come back and we'll put it together. All right, I got the back panel on and I just put some screws into the back of it and screwed it to the back of the frame. Fits perfectly. The other two pieces, the side pieces, are 
a little over 45 inches wide, 63 and a half inches tall. And then I'll bring those two pieces in, we'll get them screwed on, and then we'll be on our way. All right, so I got the two sides cut. I got one of them put on on the side, and I have one more over there that I just have to screw on over there, so I'm gonna do that right now. Now I'm gonna go ahead and cut the strapping to put in the corners to make this whole thing all square. I'm gonna get cutting that strapping and I'll be back in just a second. All right, so I get all the needed strapping cut the way I need it. I'm gonna go put these two in the corner. I'm gonna glue and screw them in place to, for some added strength. And then I'm gonna put the ones along the top rim so when I go to put the top on, I have something to screw into. And then we'll go from there. Where's my glue? Have you seen it? All right, so I have that top rim all framed with the strapping just so I have a place to screw the top to. I'm gonna go ahead and cut that top piece off, bring it in and screw it in, and then we'll uh, see about working on the front. Okay, so I got the top piece cut. Perfect fit, I just have to screw it down, and then we can start working on the doors on the front. All right, so I cut another piece of this OSB. So I have a 24 inch width for each door. So I cut two of them to cover the top and then I'll make a couple more for the bottom. So I screwed this one on just to hold it in place. I just put a single screw in it to hold it in place so I can go ahead and get it all cut and put the hinges on and everything else. And then I cut a couple of pieces of strapping to put in place in the side here to give the hinges something to screw into. And then I'm gonna do the same with the door. I'm gonna put a piece of strapping in to screw into the door, to screw the hinges into. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these doors put on, get the hinges on. I'm gonna go ahead and get these put on, get the door set up, and then uh, we'll be right back with you. Okay, so we got one door done. I just need to put uh, some sort of latch or something on here to hold the doors shut. I put a piece of strapping in here and a couple pieces on the door to hold them right in place when the door's shut so it's not shifting up and down. We got that one door done. I'm going to get the other done and I'll be back in just a second. Now we have doors. I got them to fit nice and tight. So we have our doors. Now the next step is I need to cut holes in the doors for windows to put the plexiglass in so we can be able to see inside and watch the CNC work. I also need to get some LED lights to put in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut the holes for the windows on the doors and then we'll get the plexiglass put in place and we'll be right back. Bonsai! I got one of the doors done and so I wanted to go over with you how I got this door done by doing the other one the same way. So off camera I kind of went through a bunch of trial and error and tried a bunch of different things and wanted to figure out the best way to get the, put the door on. I cut the piece of plexiglass, I actually ran down to the store and got a fine tooth blade for my jigsaw. Uh, so it made it very easy to cut and without cracking it. One of the things I learned is if you use a fine tooth metal cutting blade for your jigsaw and go very slow, it'll cut nice and smooth. If you try to go too fast even with that blade, it will crack because I cracked it. <laughs> so I cut that, I cut the hole open an inch inside of the plexiglass edge 
So this way I could screw it on. So on the inside I put some strapping that I could screw into from the outside. I drilled holes in the plexiglass on the drill press. Screwed through into the wood to hold the plexiglass on. And then I didn't really like the way it looked so I just cut some strapping and just did a simple little trim around the edge and that came out just fine. One of the things I also picked up at the hardware store when I got that blade was some cabinet hardware. I also got these locking cabinet latches so the door will stay shut. So I can push it shut and it'll stay shut and I can easily open it. So that works. I'll do the same thing on the other side. I'm just going to go ahead and do the other side now and I'll show you how I did it. So the first thing I did is I drilled holes all around the edge. About three three holes in each side. I'm just going to put one screw in just to hold it in place. Right, so that will hold the plexiglass in place on the door. Is the camera on recording? Hi. I'm a little dinosaur. I'm a little dinosaur. A dinosaur. I'm a little dinosaur. I'm a little dinosaur. <laughs> Alright, so I got those screwed in on this side for the top piece. Now I'm going to do the same thing on the bottom. And that's pretty much all held in at this point. I'm going to put a piece on either side here. Just hold that strap in place while we screw it in. Hold that one in place. Screw that one in. There we go. We got a window. So I'm going to do the same thing and just cut a few pieces of strapping to screw in around this just to make it look a little bit nicer. Plus it'll actually create a handle unintentionally, but that works out good. And then I can pull the plastic off later when I'm done, which is why it looks foggy right now. That's just a protective plastic that comes on it when you buy plexiglass. So I'm going to go ahead and put that trim on and then put the door hardware on. Line this up roughly with the trim behind it. And I'm going to pre-drill because I have the plexiglass and I don't want to crack that, which will happen. Don't ask me how I know. If I don't pre-drill through the plexiglass, it will crack. Alright, so there we go. We got two doors with two windows and all the hardware installed, so the door shut nice and tight. I put the other window in and I decided to make it a window that doesn't open because I'm very rarely going to need to come in through the sides or through the back. So what I did in the back, I'll bring the camera over and show you. So it's kind of hard to see since it's dark, but in the back I cut out a section of the sheathing and I assembled the CNC back together, as you can see. And then all I did was secure it back in place with some strapping and screwed it back in place and closed it up. So it's basically an access door I can open just by removing the screws if I ever do need to. I do have a window I am gonna put in the side over here. I'll bring it around and show you. So as you can see, what I did over here is I cut an opening in the side for me to assemble it and get it all put together. I haven't permanently put the window. I'm gonna do a window just like I did on the other side. And then I just put this bracing in on either side just to keep it from racking around. Then I made these doors out of some of the OSB that I had left over. And it's basically just half inch OSB. And so I used the strapping to frame the outside of the door. This way I had something to screw the hinges onto. And you can see the hinges right there. And so I just hinged right to the 2x4 frame on the bottom part there. For the router itself, I ran an extension cord up the top and I secured it with some wire mounts. And then I just have this extension cord just hanging about 6 or 8 inches or so. So this way it has enough play so when the router is moving around, it can pull that extension cord with it. Because the router, the cable for the router itself isn't super long. 
So that gives it a little play. So as the router moves forward and back, it won't pull the plug out, which would be very bad in the middle of a cut. I put a new three quarter inch piece of plywood down on the bed. So I'd have to flatten that. That's a, a new wasteboard I put down. So I'm gonna have to flatten that. I actually have some new hardware that I'm gonna use for securing stuff to the bed. And then the sides, very simply, just screwed some plexiglass to the outside and then just framed it in with some more strapping. So then for the electrical for the computer for the CNC, which is that little box over here, the electrical for that goes down a hole on this side as well as the USB cord to connect to the computer. And then down below, for now, I have this little shelf here, this little wooden box basically. I'm going to put the computer on that. So when I have the program ready to run, I'll put the computer there. I'll plug it into the USB cord, which is right there for the CNC, which runs back up. You see, I have a power strip down here. There's the power supply for the CNC computer. There is an extension cord in there with three plugs in the end of it. And the extension cord for the router is plugged into one of those. This power strip is plugged into another. That power adapter for the CNC computer is plugged into the power strip and then the computer will also be plugged into the power strip. So a couple things that I haven't done yet that I do want to add to this is I do want to add some LED lighting inside here with a switch on the outside so I can light up the whole inside. I want to add some small camera mounts in there because so I got a couple of kind of generic GoPro cameras so I think that would be pretty cool to put those in there. This way I can get some video of the CNC doing its job which I think would be kind of cool to. And then of course the last thing is the dust collection and the dust collection is going to connect to that dust boot that I have that I 3D printed and I'll actually share that with you later. Most of the materials that I used to build this I already had and as usual I appreciate you being here. Thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed yet please consider subscribing and we'll see you on the next video.